Hi, I'm Jackie with Military Saves, where we encourage the entire military and veteran communities to save money, reduce debt, and build wealth through a Military Saves Pledge. Thank you so much for joining for today's Midday Money Chat. This is brought to you by our friends at the American Armed Forces Mutual Aid Association, also known as AFMA. Now, before we begin, I would like to remind you of an opportunity to win $500 and jumpstart your savings. The Military Saves Saver Survey is open now through June 18th. It's anonymous. It takes only about five to seven minutes, and it enters you in our weekly drawings for $500, so good luck. Now, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce to you today's guest. Justin Pearson is a 20-year Army veteran. He enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1997 as an airborne infantryman. He was assigned duties from Fort Bragg, North Carolina to Hawaii and to other places in between. Justin is a Bronze Star recipient for Operation Enduring Freedom and was selected for promotion to Sergeant Major before retiring from the Army in 2017. Now at AFMA, Justin serves as Vice President of Business Development, focusing on building business relationships with like-minded organizations to develop new channels for membership, awareness, and growth. Justin, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Well, thank and you. And you hated me too, 1997. <laughs> well, <laughs> you sent me the bio. <laughs> <laughs> So, so today, guys, so I know, right? we're going to be talking about veteran transition and all the financial um, surprises, expectations, everything that goes along with that as far as money. So we want you to be prepared, and Justin is going to be here to give you a wealth of tips and resources. But before I say that, I do want to thank you so much for your service, Justin. Thank you so much, and thank you to everyone watching that has also served as well, or are supporters of those that are serving. So thank you. Oh, thank you. So let's talk about it. I know that when you joined the army, it was right out of high school. And I want to know, <laughs> what was it that inspired you to join the military? You know, for, first and foremost, um, you know, I would say it was, it was definitely a little bit of family tradition. My father and my grandfather, they both served in the army. And both of them, earned the Bronze Star and the Combat Infantryman's Badge, which I earned throughout my, my career too as well. But I will give you know, some credit back to that family tradition of uh, joining the Army. Um, and you know, some of the other factors were experiencing adventure, uh, you know, doing something that most people would never do, uh, nor at that point in time would I have ever had the opportunity to do since I was out on a farm in Montana like jumping out of a perfectly good airplane or, or re repelling from helicopters, putting camo on your face, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, but at, I think at the end of the day, I really just wanted to prove something to myself that I could become a soldier, that I could jump out of an airplane and earn my airborne wings, that I could face the hardest of challenges and endure them and then look back on them, knowing that I won and I, I, I did a good deed, so. Well, that's tremendous. Thank you so much for sharing. And I love that your family has a legacy of service and you've all <laughs> been <laughs> awarded the, the bronze, the bronze uh, star. I think that's, that's just uncanny, um, but amazing. So I appreciate your family service as well. Thank you. So here you are, teenager, just joining the military <laughs> to get out of your town in Montana. Now, was yep. this something you planned on doing for 20 years and retiring no. from? No, I think when I was a junior, I was finally like, okay, I got to get out of here. You know, it's time, you know, so off I went. First plane uh, plane flight too, so. <laughs> oh, that is really exciting. Um, so where did you end up going for your, your training initially? Yep, down in uh, Fort Benning, Georgia, where I did my uh, infantry training, basic training, and then airborne school training, so. It's a different world, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then what was it that kept you in the military for so long? You know, my initial thoughts going in was, hey, I'll do four years. I'll secure the Montgomery GI Bill so I have college money. Um, I'll secure the, the VA home loan so in the future I'll be able to, you know, buy a home. And then, boom, cut sling load and, you know, I'd be gone. But at each of, you know, the, the periods of time where you can re-enlist into the Army or into the military, um, you know, the great professionals 
were always dangling, you know, one of those juicy carrots in front of me with like a gift, a special opportunity and being young in the military, you know, to hear like, hey, you can go off and you can become a recruiter and recruit young men and women into the army or, uh, hey, ooh, duty station of choice. Do you want to go to Hawaii? Sign me up, right? <laughs> or here's your huge reenlistment bonus, you know, if you want to stay in. So those are a couple examples. And and once I got to the 12-year mark, at that point in time, I think that is when I started focusing on, hey, yeah, no problem. I'll do my 20. Once I got to like the 17-year mark, I started thinking, hey, I'm going to do 30 years. I just got selected for promotion to start major. And I'm looking at it like, wow, you know, I really love the camaraderie, the responsibility, and the building teams environment uh, within the Army. And then like clockwork, I think, you know, many people have said it, you know, over the, uh, over the times, hey, at some point in time, you're just going to wake up and uh, you're not, you're going to say it's it, it's time for me to leave. And I always thought, man, that's never going to happen. And I tell you, at 19 years and some change, the light switch flipped on one day telling me it's time to start your career in corporate America. And boom, put in my retirement paperwork and I started that transition. So Wow, that's incredible. And it, it is true. For, I mean, you did mention a lot of initial uh, benefits to joining the military as far as the home loan, the, mm -hmm. the VI home, VA home loan, the GI mm -hmm. bill. Um, but you're right, there are so many other incentives, incentives if you stay with it. So I can see how that would end up being a, a really fortuitous career for you. But then yeah. one day you woke up and decided it was time to become a civilian. So can you tell me <laughs> a little bit about what that was like for you? Um, what sort of veteran support services did you receive when you were in the military transitioning out? Hmm. So when I was leaving um, the military, I am assuming it's going to be much different transition classes now as they were you know, back then a few years ago. Support in 2016 was more or less a directive to watch some pre-recorded videos, complete the self-paced book and attend a three-day course, you know, to determine where you're going to go the unemployment route, the educational route, or where you're going to start a business. And oh yeah, by the way, in that three days, you had to build your resume, have it printed off. So the contractors that were pitching the course, right, um, they could validate. And I mean, at that point in time, four years ago, it was, hey, where's, where's all your, your NCOER evaluations in, in your awards? Copy and paste all that, shuffle the words around, and boom, there's your resume. Um, and yes, you know, that, that did help us. I mean, I, I guess to at least say we had a resume. Um, and it helped the, those individuals to be able to say, yeah, we were, we were trained. But, you know, at that point in time, after spending uh, 20 years in the military, you know, when I heard things like branding, you know, I looked around like branding, what? I've never heard of this. I was issued a military dress uniform. You know, I have all the, the awards and decorations. And then they would say, oh yeah, you got a network. And then I, what, the military gave me responsibility of soldiers. So yeah, I talked back and forth with them and, you know, or you got to market yourself. And, you know, I was, oh, I know that one, you know, oh, I got to send some Outlook emails. I got to ask my Facebook friends if they're doing any hiring. Um, and it just, at that point in time, you know, it wasn't making any, any sense. And I wasn't getting the traction that I was looking for. So I personally dove into LinkedIn, right, and started charting that course and I'm trying to understand this new digital world that I was really unaware of. And at that point in time, LinkedIn was just starting to evolve. And it was just starting to see growth. It's night and day as it is from today back four years ago. I mean, at that point in time, they had just launched the option to uh, share an image, wow. share a picture. Like they didn't even wow. have the option to share you a URL. Like you couldn't share a, an article. You couldn't even use the URL to a YouTube video um, at that point in time. It, that didn't happen until several months later. And I remember, because when it did happen, I was like, oh, I'm going to go get a, a, a professional video done, the Justin's transitioning from the Army video. And that was like in December of 2016, when I was finally, uh, you know, able to, to, to upload that and to use that, you know, so in, in between like June and in December, you know, I spent my time finding mentors, trying to have calls, um, and trying to learn this new uh, transition world. 
Um, so getting up two hours earlier, staying up three hours later and having hundreds of telephone calls, you know, and at that point in time, I'm still like unaware, you know, everyone's pointing me in different directions. So yeah, at, at a very minimum, I was extremely stressful, uh, but I wouldn't say I was, uh, I wasn't fearful. I had high, high anxiety and I, for, I was looking at it from the perspective of, I have to get this right. You know, I have to be able to get it right so I can continue to provide for my family. And, you know, one of the good news stories of that was um, coming across America Corporate Partner Partners, which is a mentorship program where they provide um, civilian professional mentors with extensive um, 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 understanding and career guidance and just you know, understanding of what transition should be like. And they helped me um, during that point in time, uh, get a better understanding of how to focus in on where I was going, why I wanted to go there type of stuff, so. Well, that's an incredible resource. So it, it, what I'm hearing you say is that even though, yes, there were the mandatory videos and the three yeah. days and the quickly slap a resume together, you didn't have a a wealth of support from the military yep. it was just kind of up to you to yep. learn how to market yourself, yep. learn, you know, how to sell who you are, what you can do, reach yep. out to the people your you knew. Your why, you know, right, absolutely. In day and age. I mean, right yeah. now you look on LinkedIn and you look at all the different veteran service organizations out there and it's, you know, it's, it's just amazing to see the, to see the support system that's been built and the resources that are available uh, for those that are transitioning and, and for military spouses. So. And speaking of spouses, um, was your wife involved in any of this? Did she attend any of this, any of these no. meetings with you? So yeah. it was basically up to you to figure it out, yeah. to relay it to her. Yeah, um, at that point in time. And, and yeah. um, you know, that was one of my, my tips is, you know, building that resource network and having your spouse part of it and finding, you know, those family and friends and building like your mini think tank, you know, to where you can brainstorm and really map out the right type of transition uh, for the needs of your family. Well, I, that does sound amazing. Get your partner involved if you have one, leverage your network, utilize uh, LinkedIn. Um, we've also recently come across RallyPoint, which mm -hmm. is all for the military. It's a social media platform, and that's another really great way that you can connect with other service members and veterans um, who might be able to point you in the right direction for a job. Um, I could even imag imagine that you're trying to consider how do you translate jumping out of a perfectly good airplane <laughs> to a work skill in, you know, corporate America. So yeah. I could see how there would be a little bit of finagling as to what you've done and how you can apply those skills. Yeah. Um, what about training to find a commensurate salary? Because I know in the military, you get a lot of different allowances that aren't mm -hmm. there necessarily when you get into the corporate world. So do you have advice for someone who's looking to earn about an equivalent amount that takes into consideration healthcare, housing, anything like that? You know, that, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, I would look at, you know, when you think about um, yourself as a professional based on um, the skills and experience that you have, first and foremost, um, you know, I think it's really important to um, sit down with your wife, your friends, your family. A great book to read is What Color Is Your Parachute, right? And within What Color Is Your Parachute, there's seven different petals. And within those petals, they talk about different types of goals and what you're looking for. And that really kind of helps you shape your what and your why, right? What makes you passionate about um, your skills and abilities and how can you apply that to something uh, per se like a project manager or an operations manager or jumping into a marketing agency and running uh, the marketing uh, for that organization. So first and foremost, you, you got to find out what your why, um, your, what your what is and what your why is. And then once you know that, you know, through these mentorship discussions, it's finding out, hey, what are these different types of um, roles, right, and different functional skill sets that really get you excited inside, right? And if, if, if you're not feeling that, then you just have to continue to have more discussions with mentors until you start to understand, well, what does an operations manager do? Or what is business process management? Or um, what is business architecture? And how can I apply Lean Six Sigma methodology into that? Right? So once you start to have those discussions and 
you could say, wow, I, you know what? I found out I want to be a human resources specialist or a employee um, relations consultant, whatever that may be. Once you start to understand, hey, what are the two or three different types of jobs you have? At that point in time, you really hone in and you focus on the jobs themselves, right? And what I would do is, you know, I would go to a variety of different companies that I was interested in. I might have a top five or a top 10 list. And I would look within those companies and I would say, hey, okay, business process manager or operations manager. And I see those roles. I would print those roles off. I would start to study those roles and get an understanding of what some of those requirements actually meant, right? Because you can look at required qualifications and desired qualifications and you may say, yeah, I got it. But, you know, I challenge you that are listening Use LinkedIn, reach out, find someone that is an expert in that specific space, get 13 minutes on the calendar with them, have a Zoom call and get them to discuss, um, you know, how to implement a, an agile workplace um, for your organization. And they're going to break that down. So then you can share your experience as it relates to the need of the position itself. At that point in time, you can look and say, am I qualified for this? Would I be a good candidate? Right. And if the answer is still yes, and your mentors are saying, yeah, I think you'd be a great fit. And it's all making sense at that point in time. Right. You already know, for instance, hey, I want to go to Charlotte, North Carolina. OK, well, I would jump onto salary.com, Glassdoor, Indeed. I would look at what does an operations manager make in um, in Charlotte, North Carolina for someone that has 10 years of experience. You start to get you're going to find that general number. Right? It could be $90,000, $100,000, $110,000. Focus on that, on, on that salary median because that's, that's a salary median that's been approved by an organization specifically for a certain type of position. A human resources specialist in Charlotte, North Carolina, the salary costs of that position as it relates to an operations manager position are totally different. I'm not saying you or me, hey, we need to put a price tag on our head, but you got to look at the position itself. So once you know, hey, this is the type of position, I'm qualified for it, I have this much experience, and it's in a specific location, Minnesota, or wherever the case may be, you got to know, hey, okay, this is this is what they're looking for. And that salary band may be 90 to 110,000. And you can say, okay, is 100,000 where I believe I should be or where we would be comfortable with? Okay, would 95 be? Right, so I might take a step back from that salary median just so I can get my feet in the door. When I'm filling out an application and a company says, oh, how much money are you looking for, Justin, based on this specific position? If I know based on the research that I did, hey, it's 90 to 110, but I come in at 95, I'm still within that band. And then I'm specifically talking about um, the, the required and desired quals associated to that specific position. Now. I did that, but what I didn't do in my transition, <laughs> which was a huge, massive struggle, right? Um, I, I didn't um, lay out like, okay, in, in Pittsburgh, outside of Pittsburgh, you have Coriopolis City, you have Moon Township, um, which is the township, Allegheny County and the state of uh, Pennsylvania. I'm paying taxes on all of these different areas. And if I'm buying a home, there's different types of um, um, real estate fees associated with that, right? I didn't, I didn't even look at that. So I was just like, oh, okay, I'm fine. You know, and that comes back to one of those struggles was when I got my first civilian, I got the pay stub first, because I'm like, you know, I, why do I need to look online and check my bank to see what the direct deposit was? You know, I'm like, oh, look at this pay stub. That is so cute. Let me check this out. Oh, what in the world? What happened? You know, like over half my paycheck was gone. You know, and I did not realize that. I was just totally unaware and did not know, hey, you're going to be paying all kinds of taxes. I mean, you think about it. Earlier, I was in Texas. I wasn't paying any taxes. There wasn't anything coming out of my paycheck. And I had for 20 years really didn't see many monies coming out of my paycheck. So part of that transition process should be, you know, when, when, when you're a year out or six months out, hopefully it's a year out or 15 months or whatnot, you're, you're sitting down and you're laying out uh, that plan. You're trying to shape what your salary should look like. You need to get a good understanding of um, 
of the different resources that are out there. So you, so you have a full picture of all the deductions that are gonna come out of your pay. And then once you, you can align all that and, and all these, you know, hey, I need to get this type of stuff. These are things I'm going to have to pay for at that point in time. Then I would come back to the salary and say, okay, is this the type of job that is, is within um, you know, my expertise that I could do that I would get hired for? Because there's a difference between saying, you know, oh yeah, I could be a, a, an operations um, coordinator or I can be an operations manager or I'm a senior operations manager or I'm the VP of operations within a particular business, where, whether it's small, medium, or large, or it's a full enterprise versus like, hey, yeah, I was in the army and I was a senior leader and I ran a whole bunch of operations. I track everything from the commander, but really am I a VP of operations for you know, a company that makes 200 million? No, I don't, I don't know anything about that company, nor the business process or how everything happens. So you just gotta look at it from it, not, hey, you need to take 10 steps back but you really have to implement uh, some learning time frame in there for you to, to make a good transition from the mindset perspective of, of understanding business process or whatever your role may be in general, right? So, you know, maybe a great tip would be in a year from when you get out, what would you like to, your salary to be? So at that point, if it was 95, well, okay, would you be happy with 90? 87 five you know and in a year you'll get to 95 those are all things i would definitely take um, into consideration when you're shaping and understanding that just the salary perspective of it great thank you justin you said so much just now that really resonates because one is finding that good fit two is translating your experience into civilian speak so that your resume does get noticed and three decide where your forever home is going to be. Once the military isn't telling you where you're living, there are differences in cost of living from, you know, Georgia and North Carolina are much more affordable than California and Hawaii are. So those are things to take into consideration. As you said, taxes, even just the cost of real estate, you can buy more house in certain areas that are maybe more remote versus living in a city. So that's something that you'll want to consider. Plus, for those of you who aren't retiring and aren't getting medical care anymore, like the TRICARE, you're going to probably be paying for health insurance. So these are all things to factor in when you're looking at, um, is this a good job? Is this the, my desired location? And even though that sounds like a really large amount, consider you're not getting the BAH anymore, or we even received COLA in Germany because the yeah. cost of living allowance, you know, we needed that extra money. Jobs don't do that in the civilian yeah. world necessarily. So that's wonderful. You suggest to go to salary.com or Glassdoor. Yeah. And so look at what, what is paid for that job. And you can even look at you know housing rates in that area as well. And that can help you shape that number. So thank you. Wow, that was a wealth of information. Um, so when you got out, did mm -hmm. you have any sort of financial struggles or financial successes? Was there anything that surprised you? I, the taxes sound like yeah. a pretty the massive taxes, surprise. Yeah. yeah, the taxes yeah. was one of them. But I also didn't know at that point in time when I was transitioning out or even leading up to it, no one had ever said, you need to get your life insurance now. Right? Ah. You need to do it before you start the VA process. It was like, I didn't get my first smack up side the back of the head was like a month before I transitioned out. And then I was like, oh, wow, I just dropped the ball. Right. So, you know, at that point in time, that's when I was like, oh, OK, I'll just do VGLI for now. And then you fast and then I fast forward, you know, finally, nearly four years later. And that's where I locked in my own life insurance policy, as well as um, my policy for my spouse with that. That's very good advice. And that's another consideration too, is if your spouse has had a difficult time with employment while moving from duty yep. station, you know, all around the world, mm -hmm. every few years to duty station, now maybe your spouse wants to also work or go to school. And so these are all things to factor in um, to involve them in that discussion. I know another consideration that I've heard a lot of people say they didn't expect was when they do get that civilian job, all of a sudden they have to outfit an entire wardrobe of professional dress. You know, you're not just yeah. issued uniforms anymore. So um, <laughs> I think a good tip as well, if you know you're going to transition in that last year, maybe start setting some money aside yeah. for a transition fund just so you can cover any of those um, unexpected expenses that are going to be yeah. 
coming your way. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and there's a lot of veteran service organizations that do donate um, so, uh, suits um, mm -hmm. and that and dresses and whatnot for uh, for service members transitioning. Where you know, once they register, you know, they get it free attire and they get it sent to them, and and that's just part of. Um, them as a nonprofit and how they support our military community. So I encourage you all uh, to, to look on that. You can do some pretty easy searches to find organizations that will um, put together a suit for you or a, a great uh, a dress professional outfit. So that's great because actually, I guess at first, all you need is the one to do the interviews and land yeah. the job. And then from there, you can build, build your wardrobe yeah, if definitely. necessary. And Great. sometimes in some cases, I mean, you may not even need a suit depending on what type of role it, role it is, you know, because mm -hmm. if you walk there in there in a suit and no one else is in a suit, you know, it just doesn't make sense. So, you know, part of learning about the organization and those mentorship discussions that you, that you have as you're getting ready to start the interview process is, you know, hey, if I was to, you know, have an interview per se, you know, what, what would an individual wear for that interview? And they may say, hey, you just come in with polos and a khaki and dress mm -hmm. shoes. And that's, that's as dressy as you need to be. Mm -hmm. So just take that into consideration. Great. Thank you for your advice. I appreciate that. So your, your experience has been so wonderful. You had this thing that you, you decided as a ch as child, a teen, to join the military, <laughs> see the world, following the footsteps. Then you ended up with this wonderful career spending two decades, a family, and you've come out saying, okay, it's time to rejoin the civilian world. So after you did all this and mm -hmm. you marketed yourself on LinkedIn and you know, you learned some things, you just learned the ropes on your own. It sounds like, sounds like, yep. <laughs> what did you, what did you do for your job when you got out? What was your first position? Was it with AFMA? Uh, no, it, it actually wasn't. You know, all the positions that I've been in um, since I retired from the army in 2017 have all been, you know, within the, uh, the military ecosystem mm -hmm. in ways that I could help our military community. So my first role, I was a senior manager of um, of a marketing agency working with brand and working with clients to be able to um, attract veterans and military spouses into employment or educational opportunities or maybe even starting a, a franchise. And that that led me to the opportunity of military recruiting with Wells Fargo in helping um, um, countless lines of business um, recruit and attract uh, veterans and source for veterans. Um, and, and that was a great experience from being able to, you know, help the homeless Marine that was living under a bridge, you know, to become a teller, you know, to, you know, helping um, 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 countless veterans get, you know, $100,000 plus a year jobs and, wow. you know, it's life changing opportunities for them. And, and throughout both of those roles, you're just continuing to build relationships, right? Continuing to network and just find where, uh, where you where you can be aligned most with your passion. And for me, it was also like, hey, at scale, you know, how can I make even more of an impact and the opportunity uh, with AFMA to be able to work with veteran service organizations and military support organizations and find those um, um, groups that are like-minded, that are aligned to our mission, that are totally 100% focused on the military community. It's, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing to be a part of an organization that truly cares, that you can see it. You can walk right down the hall and you can see our member benefits team on the phone, making calls, changing lives and helping people. Or you can walk over to another corridor and hear individuals that are assisting those veterans that are calling in, that are trying to lock in their life insurance and protect their family. You know, so this opportunity, it's a lot closer and a lot more sincere um, in this aspect um, of, of protecting your family um, than I ever could imagine. I'm just really grateful for that opportunity to continue to impact um, our military uh, families and this whole ecosystem. So it's like a way for me to continue to lead, you know, like in the army, I loved being a leader and love talking about leadership. And, you know, this is just another opportunity to still kind of do what I do. So 
It sounds like you were just destined to live a life of service. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's incredible that you are following your passion and you're not just finding a job just for yeah. a paycheck. I could see if you joined the military with purpose and with that drive and ambition, how you've still got that with you. And now you're using those experiences and you're reaching out, helping other um, veterans. And I think that's, that's just something that really resonates with me as well. So I appreciate that you're doing that and you're still giving back. Yeah. So for anyone, I'm going to give us a little plug quickly for Military Saves. Anyone who's yeah. tuning in right now and you are looking to transition out shortly, um, if you have any questions, you can ask them in the chat and Justin will be more than happy to answer those for you. And then at Military Saves, we are here to help provide free tools, tips, and resources and basically be your accountability partner on reaching your financial goals. So if you take our Military Saves pledge, which we'll have a link as well, that can help you and transitioning out of the military can be a really great first goal. And then from there, you can just build. So, all right, Justin, let's talk about, um, I'm curious. So how did you decide when you got out? I, I've heard about the job hunt. How did you decide where you were going to live? Was, was the cost any sort of consideration? Was it being around family? Was it just geographical? You know, at, at that point in time, it was totally focused on finding a job that, mm -hmm. um, that did bring in the highest salary, right? Mm -hmm. That was still in the military community, you know, at that point in time. And, you know, coming from Texas, growing up in Montana, and then as I'm getting ready to leave the military, I'm thinking like, yeah, I want to I want to go to Alaska. I want to be on that little island that you, you take a prop plane to, you know, just out in the wild, wild west. Um, and, and it wasn't, you know, it was, hey, you're going to go outside of, you know, outside of Pittsburgh. So that was a, a, a very, very big change. And it was outside of, you know, from a geographical preference outside of those goals. So earlier, you know, when I talked about finding your what and your why and, and really, you know, developing this think tank of support amongst your spouse and your family members and your friends, um, you know, I really, really think that just plotting out, hey, what are the two or three different locations that that's where you want to go? You know, that is, that's where you're going to be motivated because like when a recruiter asks you or a hiring manager asks you, oh, so um, you want to, you want to go to Montana? I would be like, oh, yes, of course. I love the big sky country. I love the opportunity to go to Glacier National Park, right? To, to be able to walk, um, walk these trails. Have you been to the Avalanche Lake Trail? And they may say, oh, yeah, that right there, they can relate to that, right? There's a reason why they have a specific vacancy in, we're just saying, Montana versus like, you know, if a hiring manager or recruiter asks you, hey, do you want to go to Madison, Wisconsin, and you have no relatability, you know, to that area, which Madison, Wisconsin, amazing pizza, yeah. you know, it was a, a great <laughs> trip, but um, I think relatability in, in that location is important during, um, during those during the recruiting process but and especially like when you're getting out of the military hey, where do you want to go you choose go to a place that's going to make you happy and then from there you're going to be happy that's going to be a place where you can thrive trust me you'll find a job if you're focused and you're building the right network and you're using you know some of the tools that we've talked about today uh, to be able to build and grow and, and prepare yourself uh, for a role in corporate america or department of defense or whatnot wonderful so you have a lot of choices um, and in the military, you don't always have a lot of choices. And now I know for some that freedom can almost be overwhelming because you can go where you want, do what you want, you know, live where you want, um, but you are in control. And if you do feel unsure, you can take advantage of many uh, veteran organizations, groups, yeah. tap into your own personal network of your battle buddies that have already gotten out and have been there before. Um, and then take into consideration your special skills, your interests, your purpose, what's best for you and your family. Um, and then I do like that you suggested um, life insurance and yeah. where to specifically crunch numbers. And I, I think, again, that as long as you start planning, like you said, a year in advance, if possible, you can start saying, well, if we set aside this amount of money that can go towards, um, you know, any sort of cost that if you do the VA home loan, I know that that's going to yeah. be a huge advantage if you're looking to be a homeowner. Um, so basically just sit down and either yourself or your spouse, go ahead and talk about what your, your dreams are, your plans, and then you can build around that. And we even have a spending and saving tool with military saves where you start tracking a few months worth of 
your saving or your spendings. And then you yeah. can say, okay, well, we can cut here or we actually mm-hmm. can stash this amount aside. So just take charge of it. You will yeah. have, um, it, it might feel a little overwhelming, I'm sure some days, but you are not alone. There are resources, networks, and I know that Justin's here at AFMA to assist you. We're here at Military Saves. So you're not alone. So before we go, do you have any sort of other specific resources that you'd like to share today, Justin? You know, I just want to amplify, you know, leveraging military and veteran support services and organizations as much as possible. There's a lot of nonprofits out there and organizations that are totally there focused on supporting those transitioning and our veterans and, and, and military spouses. So they definitely can be a combat multiplier for you. I mean, even our spouse link brand, you know, stay informed, get support, be inspired, and you're able to learn and connect to a community. Um, so I definitely encourage you to check out our spouse link brand and Team RWB. I mean, that's another one. I mean, how often, you know, do you think about personal well-being um, and, and fitness? And Team RWB stands for enriching the lives of veterans um, in their communities through physical and social activities. So again, lots of resources, higher military, um, which connects service members and spouses to meaningful careers. That's another great opportunity if you haven't had the opportunity to check them out. Vets to industry, another one. It's like this networking beehive where literally hundreds of professionals will come together a month, right? And they'll do networking sessions on LinkedIn and you're building your brand, you're connecting with people, you're having great discussions and you're finding opportunity. And then last, but definitely not least is, you know, find ways that you can obtain civilian certification in whatever specialty that may be. And a great partner we have is PM ProLearn. They provide certifications around project management, agile and scrum. So I definitely um, consider using um, resources like that. Great, thank you so much. We'll get the information on that from you and we'll make sure we share those uh, resources with anyone watching. And then at Military Saves, we've got a partnership with the Yellow Ribbon Network and they provide free, totally free financial coaching and counseling. So if you're watching and you want that and you kind of want to snapshot and start building a plan, you can't, you can't beat free. Um, these are trusted professionals. So. <laughs> All right. So one last question before you go, Justin, do you have one piece of advice you would like to share to someone who is ready to transition from the military into the civilian world? Well, I guess the, the most powerful piece of advice that I can tell you is to leverage LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Right now, you may not know what it means or what it is, but LinkedIn is a hundred times more powerful than you understand right now. So please take the time, start building your brand, get on LinkedIn and, um, you know, get mentors. And if you need help, I'm here to help too, but definitely leverage LinkedIn because that can be the, the bridge to your next opportunity and um, the bridge to allow you to continue to develop meaningful relationships and the next community that you decide to join. So thank you so much for the opportunity today to talk about AFMA, talk about my military career and just the opportunity to talk to your, uh, your audience. So, and thanks for those that are listening. Well, we so appreciate your time today and your expertise, Justin. I, you have lived a life that um, you know very a select group of individuals do, but we love. I know as a military spouse, we love taking care of that veteran community yeah. and letting you know that once you take the uniform off, you still matter, and we want to do everything we can to lift you up and see you continue your journey of success. So thanks to AFMA today for presenting today's Midday Money Chat. Thank you everyone for watching. And Justin, thank you again for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. You too. Bye-bye.